thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on our uh, ACM webinar. I'll be going through our projects uh, today and uh, give you an update, as Andrew mentioned, and uh, opening this up to some Q&A at the end. Um, as our standard disclaimer, and uh, we'll zip straight into uh, where we're located with our projects. Um, we've got uh, Kuletha as our key lithium project up in the Pilbara, um, about uh, 200 kilometres north of uh, Mount Newman, and uh, about 200 kilometres south of Port Heaven, we have the, the Shore project, which is a uh, um, uh, iron ore potential project. Um, and then in the south, uh, toward near Southern Cross, we've got our Rankin Dome rare earth property. And uh, in the southwest of WA, of course, we've got a number of um, uh, uh, Kalen projects. We have a large, uh, large tenement holding of uh, nearly uh, 2,000 square kilometres uh, throughout Western Australia. And this puts us in good stead for uh, long term exploration uh, activity. Um, I'm joined uh, by a um, well-experienced board. Um, Michael Wright is our chairman and Gary Brabham is a, a well-renowned geologist who's our non-executive director. And uh, you can read their profiles on the presentation at your leisure. Um, we, uh, at this stage, uh, um, still have over... Uh, um, uh, three and a half million dollars in the bank and uh, approximately and then um, and that uh, we've got uh, 43 and a half million shares out on issue um into the Coletha project up in the Pilbara and the short project you can see where we are um we're surrounded by a number of um of world-class um, lithium projects uh, to the north of um, Coletha. Um, namely Wajana and Pilbungura. Um, and we go on to our next slide to show you what we've done this year um, since we listed. Our exploration focus has been up in the um, northwestern side of Kaletha and a little bit in the central part of it. And this is partly due to um, the Access availability. Um, there's a number of uh, tracks that we've used to to gain access to these access to these areas, and uh, so we've hit those as quickly as possible to get these results out uh, to the to the market. Um, we've also conducted a um, very extensive high spectral study of uh, various forms of uh, satellite imagery to help us to define um, high value targets in the Kaletha, across the Kaletha project to help us zone in on the, um, the Goldilocks zone where we're expecting to be able to deliver, um, uh, to, frankly, better, better results than we've sort of been able to release so far in, our, uh, in the first sampling program, which was a little bit restricted due to um, access. Um, this study is uh, still being finalised. So there's a little bit more work to come in uh, to our system. Um, it's been conducted by some world-class specialists in this field. And so we're excited to be able to uh, really you know, uh, receive that final report in the next, uh, the next week or so. And then we'll be able to um, hit the ground uh, hard in the new year on Coletha and we're expecting to be able to get into all these little red areas here are the high, high value or uh, areas where the specialists have identified that we have a good uh, response um, of the uh, sort of alteration uh, and, and clay mineralogy that we would expect out of these uh, uh, lithium pegmatites. And so we'll be going in there early in the new year. Um, probably from about the uh, second week and uh, start working on the, on those those areas and hopefully we'll be able to get across all this whole region and um, we'll have uh, news from that. Uh, we're expecting in uh, mid-February we should have uh, the results of that mapping and sampling and the assays from that area 
We're going to be hitting that with uh, a helicopter assisted program and uh, so we can um, get that news to the market as, as quickly as possible in the new year. We did achieve some good results, um, although obviously they're substantially less than what the market was expecting. But the results that we have uh, have received do indicate that we're, uh, we are in uh, uh, fertile, intrusive rocks. And uh, it's a matter of uh, finding the right area in, in that zonation uh, spectrum in this large area um, that we have at Kuletha. Um, there's a little scale bar down down the bottom here. That's a five kilometer scale bar. So you can see this is a, a huge area to, to cross. And um, so with, a, with the assistance of the, the uh, our helicopter, we'll be able to get into that ground um, a little bit more easily. Now, Kaletha holds a number of styles of mineralization um, apart from pegmatitic uh, uh, lithium occurrences. Um, we also have uh, the base of the forest cube group. In this little photo here, you can see this is the base of the forest cube group where you have um, your conglomerate hosted gold and you also have these um, manganiferous shales. There's an example of it here. And these are, are uh, expected to be rather substantial in terms of aerial extent at the, um, at the contact between the, the forest cube group rocks and the, the basement intrusive rocks. So that's something we'll be keeping an eye on as we uh, progress our exploration at, uh, at Kuleta. Down into uh, Southern Cross, um, we've, um, this is the tenement holding, it says the Southern Cross tenure encompasses uh, three tenements. We have in a, it's a joint venture earning we have with Cooler Gold. Today we've focused on this Northwest sector We've gone in and um, followed up with uh, some uh, detailed auger sampling on a 100 by 100 grid, as we've previously reported. And the picture that we get from the results of that is very clear how we've got some very high grade uh, near surface uh, play results. All these samples were taken at a two meter depth. So we're looking at a level playing field. These results are, are quite spectacular. Um, this is the, uh, in purple here, these are all the, the values above, uh, above 500 ppm lithium. Uh, and in the, this is the chip tray, this is an example of the clays we're getting at, at, at two meters. And this is the little, uh, auger rig we used to do that drilling. We had a, um, a peak value of, uh, 1300, uh, P ppm total rare earths from that, uh, area in the northwest of Rankin Dome. And if I we look at how that sits in terms of the original um, work that Cooler Gold uh, produced, this is the area that we did our um, a focused uh, program on. And this is the whole area that, that Cooler got some results on. You can see there's still some hits in here. And we went and did an RC drilling program on some of these areas, which were separate from this auger program. And these are the uh, defense line of RC holes that were drilled there in the middle of the, um, the suite. And there was another couple of holes up in the, uh, the east and the northeast of that small sector. Um, they good, uh, they're good results in terms of um, the overall uh, Total rare earths we have up to uh, two and a half thousand ppm total rare earths. S significantly, the um, the neodymium and praseodymium uh, percentage of uh, rare earths in terms of those those elements in terms of the uh, total rare earth oxides that we have is between uh, 22 and uh, 25 percent so that's a good strong value that indicates we're in a very good uh, we're in good rocks here there's still a lot more work and drilling to do uh, again in terms of of, of of scale this is um these drill holes here are one kilometer apart there's one kilometer between 
um, these two drill holes and basically there's uh, you know, several kilometres between the centre of the auger program that we did and these drill holes. So we've got a large area there and some of it where there's no information. So we've still got a lot of work to do to um, uh, develop from this project. We are um, uh, in conversation with um, with uh, a number of metallurgical um, specialists, including CSIRO, to um, identify the metallurgy of these uh, of these samples, and to quickly ascertain um, those characteristics to help us define the uh, so that you know give us a better idea of the economic viability of these rocks as we go forward. Um, I, I expect that their, it, the, these geological units uh, form uh, through a number of processes, um, including supergene enrichment. And again, there may be areas that are more um, um, metallurgically positive than others. And part of these metallurgical studies is to find that. And uh, as we use our geochemistry to help us guide future exploration, we can also use those metallurgical results uh, to help us uh, guide, um, guide guide us with our exploration processes. The um, the metallurgical studies do take some time, um, so but we are expecting uh, some results from those uh, metallurgical uh, studies uh, in, in in the first quarter of next year. Uh, moving back up to the uh, major um, Pilbara exploration portfolio, um, where we're surrounded by some some big players in in terms of the uh, both gold and uh, iron ore inventory and lithium inventory in amongst this uh, uh, in in this region. Um, at, at both Coletha and Shaw, we're surrounded by um, the uh, iron ore majors. So as we work towards um, our lithium exploration at Kuletha and our iron ore work at Shaw, we'll also be doing a little bit of work on, on Kuletha in terms of the iron ore. And uh, we, we don't expect it to be a, a major exploration focus for us, but we will be uh, building up our information base on those projects so that at some stage in the future, obviously, um, we'll be um, you know, talking to these majors to uh, um, have enough information where they may, may be of interest uh, or have some interest in, in, in these projects. And uh, at, we'll be adding value to those projects as we um, uh, progress through our exploration. <clears throat> Here on, on this little uh, slide, you can see these are in, in yellow. These are the areas of, of uh, prospectivity for the iron ore and uh, some of the uh, previous results that have been uh, uh, gained from the iron ore. As you can see, they're all you know, great results, you know, plus, plus uh, 50, 55%, 60% iron. And uh, so we'll um, try to, uh, as we use in the helicopter, we'll try and get onto some of these areas in the new year as well and just take some uh, further sampling on those areas to uh, build up our information base on those properties as well. And up in shore, um, we've got uh, a substantial uh, area of um, banded iron formation, which will uh, um, is, is, is in a great location. It's just um, a few kilometers uh, east of um, uh, the Abydos mining complex. And uh, so we're looking forward to be able to you know, build up on that information base as well. Um, you know, previous uh, plus fifty percent iron from those uh, banded iron formations. And uh, historically, there's um, there's been some great interest in or great results from this area on a number of uh, exploration targets. There's uh, uh, up to half ounce gold from at surface from the various uh, the conglomerates. Um, in the sort of central part of this uh, shore tenement. There's been some drilling where they've uh, tried to intersect some of this, this gold and they've re received, um, produced some you know, results uh, from that uh, that conglomerate, those conglomerates. 
Um, there's also a number of faults uh, through here and in those structures, there are a number of exploration opportunities pertaining to um, sort of uh, uh, fault related rare earth anomalies um, where you can have remobilization of the rare earths up through these structures when they uh, end up um, precipitating in the uh, sedimentary profile attached to a wood, which uh, is being cross cutted by these uh, these structures. So there's another exploration target that we'll be looking for as we uh, uh, further explore this uh, rather large uh, shore project, which is uh, 90 square kilometres in itself. Going forward into uh, 2024, we'll be hitting uh, Kuletha pretty hard um, in both Q1 and Q2, where we'll be doing our helicopter program, um, getting those results uh, back out to market uh, in, in Q1. Uh, by Q2, we should have a uh, um, ground crew better supported and uh, being on the ground to uh, keep exploring. This is a rather large tenement. Um, uh, in Q2 and Q3, uh, expecting to be drilling uh, towards Q4. Uh, and in Q2 next year, in conjunction with the uh, time frame of the, of the farmer at uh, Rankin Dome, expect to be drilling in Q2. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll be substantially uh, uh, looking at infilling the areas between all those RC drill holes. We'll have the metallurgy back by then, and that'll be guiding us to where we drill and uh, and how we drill in those areas. Um, and of course, also in Q2, Q3, we'll be um, uh, getting out onto shore and doing, uh, doing some further exploration on those tenements. And uh, the, um, the the wider Rankin Dome uh, exploration, because three big tenements there, will be um, pushing ahead with that um, uh, through throughout the year and uh, with a little bit more focus in uh, early 2025, we suspect. The opportunity comes to uh, do more work a little bit earlier. Obviously, we, we will on that extended uh, area of the Rankin Dome projects. That's uh, my presentation, and uh, I'll open up the um, uh, the floor for questions, please. Thank, thank, thanks, Dean, uh, for running us through that presentation. Look, um, as I mentioned earlier, there is a Q&A box down the bottom of the Zoom app uh, for anyone who would like to ask Dean a question. We had a couple of questions come through. Um, pre-webinar, um, which I will ask you, Dean, um, and see if any others come through as well. So just um, first question, um, what are the, uh, are the priority targets at uh, Kalitha, are they within your pending um, status tenements? We've got uh, priority targets in both the granted tenements and the pending tenements. Um, we don't really have uh, control on the time frame of when these uh, pending tenements will be granted. Um, we have had feedback from the department who indicate that they expect to be able to give a decision uh, on, on these and a number of other regional <clears throat> uh, tenements. It's all based on, on the big railway line that is going through these areas and that's what's holding it up. And so the department is um, is trying to come to a decision uh, approximately by by May uh, of next year to um, to be able to grant those tenements. Again, um, the whilst we were doing the high hyperspectral study, it was uh, common sense to do the hyperspectral study over all the area, rather than uh, you know have have to have uh, you know two bytes of the of the same work program, um, so we've got some great targets, and we'll be able to um, uh, certainly visit those targets um, uh, as um, with a helicopter and, and get some visuals on uh, on 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 those rocks as we um, as we go into uh, that program in uh, January of next year. Excellent, thank you. Um, Dean, you mentioned that there's different 
uh, styles of mineralization at Kalitha. Can you just explain what this indicates or what advantages uh, this might be? Yeah, there are quite a number of um, exploration targets and mineralization styles and types. Um, and the significance of that is overall the project is not a, a you know a, a one horse race it's um it has lithium prospectivity as we've shown uh it has uh, iron ore prospectivity which we've shown and it has a manganese prospectivity and the, the manganese potentially can be a very large um uh, sediment hosted style of manganese at the base of the forest cube group we've identified that over um, a, a one kilometer strike length i've personally ob observed it um several kilometers uh, to the east on our uh, on, on the pending tenement so that um i can see there's the potential there for that to extend um to the west throughout that um base of that forest group group so that's potentially a very high value target manganese of course is uh is you know, a critical mineral there's plenty of it in the world but it's absolutely necessary in a whole range of industries so that's uh can be a high value target the um the potential of iron ore i've mentioned uh, the um conglomerate hosted gold i've mentioned and uh there's probably a number of other styles of mineralization in there which uh you know fault related things that we uh are yet to come across but um yeah, it's it's a, a wide open ballpark at Kaletha, and I think that um, we uh, will be exploring and trying to identify those different styles of mineralization as we continue our focus on on, on the lithium. Yeah, great. That, thanks, Dean. Um, just moving over to Rankin Dome. Um, can you provide an update on the the MET testing and and where that's at at this stage? Yes, uh, Andrew. The uh, as I mentioned, we've uh, we're in. We're in conversation with um, uh, Angstow over in Sydney and uh, CSIRO, who are guiding us through the metallurgy process uh, on these um, on these samples. We expecting uh, some results from them uh, through the first quarter of next year. It's a, it's a uh, it's not a metallurgical studies uh, uh, detailed. And there are a number of uh, processes that happen to the samples in uh, preparing them uh, for metallurgical testing. Um, and of course, the Angstow are very busy. They've been flooded by a number of companies uh, at the moment to who want to get their, their samples uh, met tested. Um, we're also in conversation with a number of labs here in Perth to um, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, uh, achieving a, a faster result uh, and perhaps doing the uh, prep, some preparation work here on some of those samples and then letting Anstow just uh, focus on the on the MET testing rather than sending bulk samples uh, to uh, and let uh, uh, Anstow do all the uh, the heavy lifting there. So we've got a number of processes in place, a number of conversations with professionals to guide us through there. But as I said, we expect um, to be able to deliver something to the market in the first quarter of next year. Excellent. Um, Dean, can you just um, tell us what the significance is of the, um, the magnetic rare earth percentages that you that you did release to the market um, as part of your results at Rankin? Yeah, yeah these, are, they, they, these are good percentages. Um, the... Um, they show that our magnetic rare earths are generally um, uh, they average about twenty percent over the whole the whole holes over the um, mineralized sections. They uh, they range between twenty two and twenty seven percent of the total rare earth oxide um, uh, material. This is a, a good percentage. We're very pleased with that, and significantly the um, there are two key magnetic rare earths, that's neodymium and uh, praseodymium, and these represent uh, between 22 and 27 percent of the total rare earth oxide uh, 
um, result in those mineralized samples. So that's a, that is a very good result, and we're very pleased to have that high percentage. And I, the, the, the drilling that we've done is over a very wide area, and we expect that there will be zonation in the, uh, the clays uh, of these rare roofs. There's a lot of supergene um, processes, supergene enrichment processes that occur in these clays. And uh, so we expect through more detailed drilling, we'll be able to identify those areas which are more strongly enriched and, uh, and we'll be pleased to uh, deliver those results um, uh, from uh, you know, the uh, Q2 in, uh, in 2024. Excellent. Well, Dean, that, that looks like it's the last of the questions. Um, You've obviously got a really busy 2024 planned. Um, certainly, that 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 the, the programs that you've um, described um, certainly should lead to a lot of news flow. Um, um, I'll just hand over to you just um, for, for your final comments and um, to to close the the webinar. Yes, I'd like to thank uh, thank our uh, viewers and uh, our, our new and uh, uh, older shareholders um, for following us and being a part of this journey. It's been, uh, it's been an exciting one and um, we're, uh, we're, looking very, we're looking forward to be able to be, you know, deliver some great news and a lot of it uh, in 2024 on all our projects. Um, I'd also like to extend my appreciation for my supportive board um, who are uh, assisting me to uh, get this company underway and um, but, uh, we're looking forward to 2024 and thank you very much for joining us today.